Hello and welcome to my Swift tutorial series for beginners. In this lesson, you're going to be introduced to classes, which is a highly critical part of the Swift programming language. Now I'm going to warn you, it's a little bit of an abstract concept, but I'm sure you'll do fine. All right, let's get started. So in this playground here, I have several pieces of information. I've got three variables actually. Two of them are strings, one of them is an int data type. Remember back in lesson two of this series, I talked to you about several common data types and I just mentioned in a brief like one second sentence that you can create your own data types. Well, now we've arrived at that point and what we're going to talk about are classes. And you can think of it as a way to organize your information. Um, now, I know we talked about functions and that was a way to kind of group pieces of code together. Well, when you think about classes, you're more so thinking about information. So for example, in this scenario, I have a name, I have a salary, and I have a role. Well, you can see where this is going. All of these different variables or pieces of information have to do with a person or an employee or something like that. So what we can do is we can group this information together into our own new data type called employee. And in order to do that, we define a new class called employee. Let's take a look at the syntax involved. So you start with the class keyword, followed by a space and then your class name. In this case, we would call it employee, followed by space, and then you have a pair of curly brackets. Inside your curly brackets is where you would define your class. Let's jump back to the playground and define our employee class. So you start with the class keyword followed by space and then employee followed by space and then we have our set of curly brackets. So in between those curly brackets, you would put all of the pieces of information that an employee would have. So why don't we take this information up here I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it inside of our employee class. But one thing to keep in mind is that you're not defining the information for a single employee because remember, we are creating a new data type here called employee. So this is a general definition that you can use over and over again. Instead, you're specifying what sort of information every employee should have. So we don't fill out the specifics now. We just say that an employee data type should have a name. It should have a salary. We could start at zero and fill it in later. And let's say for role, it should be a string type as well. And by just specifying two quotes with nothing in between them, it's just an empty string. So just like that, you've defined your new class, which is essentially a new data type. It's called employee. And every single employee is going to have a name, a salary and a role. Now here's the part that is going to get really tricky and you really have to wrap your head around that. And that is that your class that you've defined right here is kind of like a template. So now that we've defined this class, how do we use it? Well, let me show you some examples with some previous data types that we've worked with before first. So let's say we have A equals 10 and let's say we have B equals Ted. Uh, that will suffice. So what's happening here with this line? Essentially, we are creating a piece of data, 10, right? It's gonna be stored in memory. And then we are creating a constant called A to keep track of that data in memory. Same thing happening right here. Ted is a piece of string data that we are creating in memory. And then we are creating a constant called B to keep track of that data in memory. Now the same concept applies here with our new data type. We're going to create a new employee in memory and then we are going to create a variable or constant called C, let's say, to keep track of that employee in memory. So let me show you how to create a new employee in memory. Well, all you have to do is write the class name followed by two parentheses like that. And by writing the statement here, we are creating a new employee data in memory. So why don't we create a new constant and assign it to that constant. Now this employee data that you've created in memory is called an object, also known as an instance of the class. In this case, that is an instance of the employee class. So let me show you just to drive home that this is your own custom type. When you create a constant A, that would be 
like that, you know, you're defining the data type of the constant, right? And this would be that. Now, A and B are really simple data types, right? Integer and string. However, C is your custom type, right? It's employee and inside contains this sort of data here. And right now it's, all, it's set to these default values which you have specified, but we can actually access that data inside of the employee and we can set and we can also get that data. And the way we do that is using something called dot notation. So let me show you how it works. So down here, since we've created a new employee object and assigned it to C, um, let us change this to var actually, because we will probably be modifying it. So we write C, which points to our employee object, and we hit dot on our keyboard, and that lets us access all of that data inside of the employee class. So we have name, we have role, we have integer. So why don't we set the salary to a thousand? Well, first, yeah, let's do that. And then I can show you print C dot salary. And you can see that it says a thousand right there. Uh, I can also set the other pieces of data like that. You know, something like that. Now, another cool thing about defining your own data type using a class like that is that in addition to specifying what sorts of pieces of data it should have, you can also define functions in here. Yes, you can write F-U-N-C space, um, let's say do work, right? If you forget, this is how you define a basic function here. And I'm just gonna print uh, I'm doing work or something like that. Um, and then let's say because they are doing work, we are going to increase his salary by one. Okay. Doing work gets you noticed by your boss, which results could result in a promotion and you would get more salary. So that's at least my <laughs> line of thinking right now. So let's say that that's the case. How would I execute this function. Uh, if I just try to call the function do work like this, it's not actually going to be recognized. Because this function is part of my employee class, I would actually have to call this function um, on an object of that class. Because I've created an employee object right here and assigned it to C, I can actually do C using dot notation now and you can see that I can access this function. Actually, why don't we ch change our print statement here and insert the name. Let's say, <laughs> but why would you refer to yourself uh, in the third person? It's doing work. How about, hi, my name is, and I'm doing work. I don't think I'd hire someone like this who refers to some, themselves like that, but let's see what happens. Okay, all right, it's running. All right, hi, my name is Tom and I'm doing work. So that's pretty cool. Now I wanna show you something else. So I'm going to define another employee. I'm gonna create another employee object in memory and I'm gonna set this person's name to Sarah. And let's say Sarah is a, let's say manager, d dot salary equals, um, we'll do with that, oh, this is an integer. And I am going to say d dot to do work. Now you'll notice that c and d are two separate employee objects. When I'm modifying the data for d, it doesn't affect C and vice versa. And when I call the do work function on D, it has nothing to do with the do work function for C. So that's a basic introduction of how to use classes. So one last thing I wanna mention is that when you declare a function inside of a class, it's actually called a method of that class. And these variables that you're defining inside your class are called properties of that class.
And also I want to point one thing out is that notice I can access salary from inside my function. And that is because it's declared up here. All right, so properties and methods when they are inside classes. Now there's a lot more to classes, but I just wanted to introduce them to you in this video. I hope you can see why classes are a fundamental building block to organizing your information. Now in the next lesson, we're going to take classes even further. For now, if you like this video, please hit thumbs up and hit subscribe to support the channel. All right, let's click on over there and I'll see you in the next lesson.